YouTube has just released and rolled out HDR or high dynamic range live streaming on their platform. This allows you, if you have a supported device, supported software, to stream in HDR for video games or even camera work, and then watch in HDR if you have a supported playback device as well. This is a little nuanced and a little complicated to get set up given that not everything supports HDR and you can't use OBS for instance. So we'll be talking about what you need and how you get set up in today's video. This video was brought to you by Nerd or Die and their new Glitch 2 Cyberpunk 2077 themed stream package, which features overlays, alerts, be right back and stream starting soon scenes, a whole chat box theme, and stinger transitions, along with other elements specifically designed for the Cyberpunk 2077 games theme. Now, this is actually available as a free update if you already owned the Glitch 2 package. This is something that Nerd or Die does regularly when they add updates or you know, new features to packages you've already bought, you don't have to pay for them again. You just get that as a freebie. So if you already owned Glitch 2, then you can get the cool new webcam frames and the social media icons and all the new theming for free. Otherwise, pick it up for yourself. It is Glitch 2 with the Cyberpunk 2077 edition theme available at eposvox.gg slash nerd or die. I'm eposvox, your stream professor, and back in 2016, YouTube added support for HDR video, which allowed you to upload in high, dyna high dynamic range if you had video files that were in that format, and then it would play back in HDR for those watching on HDR compatible devices, or it would do what's called tone mapping in that it converts HDR to SDR with the correct color translations, you know, without the same range, so that normal people could watch it on SDR displays, which has been kind of the thing for a while. HDR is still kind of a mess in the video space in terms of the standards and how you actually make videos and things like that. But in the gaming space, you do kind of just get to turn it on and enjoy it. And so that's kind of what I'm gonna be focusing on here because streaming camera stuff in HDR with actual grades gets way too messy and just outside of the scope of a single video. So we're gonna focus on gaming stuff, but the actual application of streaming HDR and how you set it up and everything like that will apply pretty much universally as well. So you may not have this available immediately, but it, it was announced and released at the time of recording and should roll out to pretty much everybody. You can now stream in HDR, but for this, you need a supported encoder. And unfortunately, there are not a lot of them at the moment because most software doesn't support it. In fact, OBS itself doesn't support it. It still uses an 8-bit pipeline with no HDR support, only Rec. 709, 601, or sRGB, whereas HDR requires 10-bit and, and uh, Rec. 2020 or 2021, or there's a million other standards, but isn't supported in OBS. So if you're looking for computer software to stream, pretty much the only option at the moment is a little software called Marilla's Action. And if you haven't heard of that, it's, it used to be really popular as an alternative to OBS and DX Story and Fraps and things like that for capturing gameplay. And I haven't really heard it be in much relevance, you know, in recent years, but turns out they actually added HDR encoding support to the software in version 4.12.2 or later. And so you're able to use that. Now you will need specific PC components, which include Intel 10th generation graphics or later, if you're using an iGPU or the integrated graphics on your processor, or AMD Radeon RX 5700 or newer, because that's when they added HDR support to their AMD VCE AMF encoder, or the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 10 series or later, because that's where HDR encoding really shines. So, of course, I always talk about NVENC and stuff because AMD's encoder is still kind of playing some catch up, but you do have some options here, but you do need that hardware. Now, if you have an Intel 10th gen processor that has an iGPU, then you'll be able to use the iGPU encoding for QuickSync if you need that as well. So you'll need to acquire Marilla's Action, buy it, download it from their site, install it, and then from there, you need to sign into your YouTube account to enable YouTube live streaming. Then go to the Action Video Recording tab. Under Hardware Acceleration, you need to select HDR10, and this will enable HDR encoding. Then in the live streaming tab, you select YouTube as your streaming service, of course, and it will automatically create a broadcast and you'll start streaming. Now this will not work for every game. There are some older HDR games that have weird HDR implementations or whatever, but as long as you are running an HDR game that's enabled in HDR, your monitor set in HDR, you do still need an HDR display for this. I think a lot of people get confused, even in like my Blu-ray ripping videos, they're like, do I need a Blu-ray drive for this? 
Yes. Do you need an HDR display for this? Yes, because otherwise your game's not running in HDR. There's no HDR to capture. So you need an HDR monitor. You need your game running in HDR or a capture device that's pulling in HDR. Although currently the main available options for that are all forcing it to SDR whenever you're sending it to another program. So like the Elgato 4K 60 Pro and the Avermedia Live Gamer 4K, both of those can record HDR in their own software. But when you, you know, put the signal out to another software, it's forced to SDR. So currently, this is only for like on PC game capture, but I will update you when that changes. So run your game in HDR, open up Marillus Action, hook your game, enable HDR10 as your hardware acceleration, and then start streaming, and you're pretty much good to go. Now, if you want to use external video encoders to do your HDR streaming for like a broadcast event or something like that, you will need a uh, HLS output compatible encoder, which needs to be able to support HEV encoding. And this is the first time we've really been able to send HEVC signals to YouTube, which is pretty cool. Uh, it needs to support 10 bit, you know, 10 bit encoding, BT2020 color space, and then some other things that they have listed in their compatibility requirements here. The only officially listed uh, Hardware encoders that they have supported are Cobalt, which are compatible with 10-bit and HDR, as well as Telestream. And they have set up instructions and things like that for those available as well. Now, if you're looking to view an HDR live stream, then you need, of course, you still need an HDR display, be it your HDR TV running the YouTube app on your, you know, your Samsung, your LG, your whatever, or a Chromecast Ultra connected to that uh, TV running in HDR mode. The Chromecast Ultra will actually allow you to view the, uh, HDR live streams, which is pretty cool. And I assume the new Chromecast that just came out probably does as well. Uh, no listing for Apple TV at the moment though, however, so that's unfortunate. And then of course, Android based mobile devices that have HDR displays will be able to play back the HDR streams in HDR as well. Now, if you're wanting to watch on a Mac or Windows computer, you can do that. You just need to set your monitor to HDR before you load the stream. This is the same thing with the YouTube videos in HDR. The annoying thing about HDR on the desktop is that you have to manually toggle it on for your entire system in order to watch content on it. So for example, if I pull up an HDR stream or an HDR video on YouTube and my desktop isn't set up to that, Chrome or your browser doesn't know that you support HDR, can't manually toggle it and it'll just play it in an SDR with the trans with the tone mapping. However, if you turn on HDR and reload the stream, then it will give you the HDR playback options and you can watch an HDR. The cool thing here to answer the question that everyone's going to ask, if you're streaming in HDR, non HDR people can still watch. They do real time what's called tone mapping in that it converts the HDR, as I mentioned before, to standard dynamic range and makes it look normal on your screen. And I have been told by the YouTube people I've been in contact with that you can actually use normal kind of looking face cams that are still in SDR and stuff on your HDR video and it will mostly look normal. So I'll be doing some testing of this today. You'll see it on screen what the results are. Keep in mind, however, graphics and things like that that you have are going to look a little dull or washed out on an HDR screen if they're not built for HDR. The Digital Foundry runs into this issue on their videos all the time because SDR and HDR are completely different ranges. So if you have SDR assets in an HDR stream, they don't look quite right. But this is a first step towards unlocking, you know, more of that HDR capability in the future. It seems everything's heading that way. So you have the option of streaming it here. And it's pretty cool that they are rolling it out, even if it's kind of early in maturity in terms of what can actually support it. I'm excited to see this progress, and I look forward to doing some HDR streams in the future once I'm settled in my new studio. I'm still moving here. You can see I'm pulling things off the of shelves and stuff. Uh, so excited to check that out. But let me know what you think in the comment section down below, and let me know if you're actually doing any HDR streams, because I want to see what people are doing with it. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more tech education and stream guides. Join us on Discord discord.gg slash eplesvox. If you have any questions about this, setting it up, you know, testing it out, anything like that, come join us and talk to us. We'd love to hear about it. And I'll see you in the next one.